rolling here. Oh, this is Crackajokia, Crackajoka. So the whole, this piece, I'm just going to have a whole podcast, how to correctly pronounce Crackajokia. <laughs> that was Josh Saucier, east of Java, erupting for the fifth time. Not at the Lamplighter Cafe and Roasting Company in Richmond, Virginia, because of a power washer. This is Sunday, July 11th, 2010. Your host is Chris Martin. Available under a Creative Commons for attribution license. Not safe for work. Topics this week. This week in Richmond, Virginia comedy with... Andrew Poli. David Wingfield. Still Josh Saucier. Jason Klingman, I think. Uh, Jesse Thomas. Chris Martin. Ooh, we're indoors, yay. It's air conditioned. Ooh, we're in air conditioned, yay. Good, Good crowd tonight. The message about the sweat going. They look less shiny than the last couple. <laughs> Pregnant pause. Bubble, bubble. For beer drinking. Okay then. Alright. Moderator. Hot Moderate. Okay, what happened on Monday? I don't remember. Damn. I had you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. you. Sorry. Blake Midget's last local show. Yeah, who gets um who gets uh, custody of Suntech? <laughs> the the Cato of comedy. <laughs> Possibly a racist referral, but uh, I'm sure Bruce Lee doesn't care. <laughs> I think you meant Kato Kalen. Yeah. <laughs> no, I meant, I meant Kato, Kato Asian sidekick. I thought he meant the guy who sleeps on people's couches. I guess if your name's Kato, you're a sidekick. Yeah. Asian sidekick to the Green Hornet. Yep. Correct. Played by Bruce Lee many years ago. Uh, so what kind of impact will, Bru will Blake Midget's... Uh, uh, departure have on the Richmond comedy scene aside from a marked decrease in STD testing. <laughs> yeah. The young boys will be happier. <laughs> it was Jason Clayton who said Love that Blake. for any libel lawyers that are listening. People will be safe to go. To it's only libel if you print it. Fine. It's slander if you say it. Yes. Yeah. What's the difference between slander and libel? If you say it or if you write or it. If you print it. What in, how about in terms of damages? Libel's a lot worse, but it's a lot harder to. Or it's it's a lot to easier. Sorry, it's a lot easier to commit libel because you have to like cite your sources and written documentation. You can get away with saying a lot more stuff under freedom of speech than you can writing. I think uh, you're looking at Blake's uh, impact now. Be less talk about slander and yes. slander and libel. <laughs> I think the uh, cougar population will get rapidly more frustrated. Roy Rogers out here is stepping into that. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's walking up right. the rope. He's a cougar hunter now. I mean, just dividing up the Blake Midget Empire. He's not a cougar hunter. He's no one cougar person prey. Can cougar prey, yeah, exactly. Actually, I think for it to be liable, you have to have you have to have malice, and we all love Blake, so That's true. there's no malice there. But he has changed his location to Austin. I'm good to leave a Facebook posting about vomiting in the Atlanta airport. <laughs> I don't find that hard to believe at all. So the more things change, the more they remain the same. So he discovered hot and fused so liquor. He found the bar, is what we're saying. Yes. Yeah. So Monday was Cafe Diem. Any particular performances that stood out? I was on work. Mine was sucking. Uh, Kree's. Kree's stood moving. out a little. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, Diem was pretty cool. Diem saw like the return to comedy of several. Uh, Tim Wood came back, yeah. Mike Bickett came back, Melanie Rasnick got back on stage after more than a year. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Oh, that was, that's that's like me. Wow, that was disgusting. I know. It's still we got that on film. <laughs> Please tell me For you got posterity. that. For <laughs> posterity. Please tell me you got that. Oh. <laughs> Not the sound.
<laughs> it's okay, we'll fix it in post. Men in, men in black, when they had the creature hanging on the, with the snack coming out of his nose, that's what I just saw. <laughs> he is single, ladies. <laughs> Could be the reason he is single. I am too. Uh, uh, why didn't Melanie Rasnick uh, drop out of comedy? Work in school. Okay. She didn't so much drop out, it's just she works Mondays, which cuts a lot of shows out. And I think she's been in school, so just time wise. Uh, she was really excited to get to come back. Um, and uh, how did John do as MC? John did, did really well. Did he? Put a lot of John Reeves, we're speaking of. Yeah. I thought, the, I thought the trumpet was a nice touch. Oh, yeah, and the Boy Scout uniform. Yes. Yeah. He had several costume changes, didn't he? Did he? I didn't. Yeah, he did. I think. I don't know. Uh, I think once he took off the uniform, he just stayed in the t-shirt. Okay. Did he give away stuff? I he was giving away firecrackers or something. No? Uh, it, apparently his mom confiscated his firecrackers. Ah, uh, yes, he has 12. Yeah. Um, Which is a common thing for mid-20-year-old uh, people. Larry Watts' uh, brother uh, went on stage for the first time ever. So it's kind of cool, forming a little comedy dynasty. Yeah, you had a little, you had a, a definite showing of the undergrads. I guess they're uh, yeah they're part of the undergrads. Yeah, so so you had a definite uh, yeah definite Reeves, obviously. They were in the house. Yeah, that was explained to me once how that it's sort of like Saturday Night Live. There's like the main thing, people Omari and John, and then there's like the associates featured, or the featured players. Featured players. It's like Wu Tang. Okay, it's true. You can't talk about the undergrads without talking about Wu-Tang. It's true. Undergrads ain't nothing to fuck with. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. That's Blood. what the U and U God stands for. That's why I'm still an undergrad, because of Wu-Tang. <laughs> and alcohol and drugs. That was Jason Klinger who <laughs> <I just> said <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm, I'm you can't slander yourself. Right now. Yeah. So the, oh, why is Mike Shea dropped off the face? Is he at the beach or something permanently? or? No, he, uh, <laughs> I know he lost his phone. Um, I think he just wanted to take some time off. I know. Mm -hmm. I know there were a couple personal things and just kind of the character wears on him. That's the hard part about not being you on stage. It's, it's a stretch to do that all the time. Well, there's probably only so many riffs you can do on being an alcoholic, drug addicted, homeless clown. He did. He was. It was still weird, but he did. <laughs> he, had Mrs. One. he had Mrs. He had Mrs. Homeless, drug addicted, alcoholic clown. Yeah, that was a crazy. Night. He, he turns out as a friend of mine. I didn't realize that. So he could, he could have like his. I guess he could have his aunt and uncle or something show up. Um, he did one set just as Mike Shea. It was still weird. The no, guitar. Was, yeah, I don't think he was actually Mike Shea. But he was Mike Shea playing a character named Mike Shea. But. Still, that was interesting. Levels, man. Levels. It was, it was, it was the Colbert. Is that like Garth Brooks author ego? What was his name? Chris, Chris, Chris James. James. There you go. Why? <laughs> Why couldn't I have gotten on the plane with him? <laughs> Everybody should have an alter ego. Ask Andy Kaufman. Yeah, well, Chris Gaines' band. Uh, the fictional Chris Gaines' his fictional band by the fictional plane crash. Really? It the, seems kind of insensitive. They did the entire behind the music to Chris Gaines. No way. Really? Yes. And he had the, the new whole, CD. He had wow. the whole soul patch, and he's like, why did they get on the plane? The SNL that had... Uh, yeah, I saw that. That was hilarious. That was mind-blowing, but that was... I can't believe he took himself that serious. Gaines. But he's a millionaire. He can do whatever he wants, I assume. Pretty much. Got friends in low places, huh? and Vegas. Yeah. Tuesday was the Clash of the Comics. Yes, yes it was. Mr. Andrew Polly came in third along with Jesse Jarvis. Yeah. Woo! Which in about a month, that's pretty good. We went from zero to hero. That's right. Third place hero. Who was yeah, second? From unheard to third. Um, a guy named Mike Seville. He was pretty good. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. his first time doing he's, comedy. He's like Whoa. a motivational speaker or something. Yeah, right? he's a motivational speaker. He's a trainer. He's a, say, he's a trainer for the Department of Corrections. Okay. <laughs> 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 Same thing. Wow. Trainer for Department of Corrections. Mm -hmm. 
Here's a Charlie's cheerful. right into comedy. Here's a cheerful job. Yeah. And who was first? Uh, Trenton Pointer. So. Not one of the Pointer sisters, apparently. No. Pointer not brothers. A, not a Pointer brothers. Yeah. He had a, I was talking to Odyssey, was, apparently. He was a brother. That clash uh, back when Odyssey was doing it. Mm -hmm. Yep. How long ago was that been? before. Oh, at least a year. But he was yes. in it when I was, yeah, when I started it, he was... At least a year. I think that's the only thing that I've seen, I've ever seen him on. Yeah, he, he rocked, I, still, I, uh, I sent a message to Odyssey, obviously wasn't at the Clash, and let him know that uh, Trenton won, and he should talk to him about booking. I sent him all the information on uh, DM at 9.55, Try and get him on at 9:55 in the next couple months too. Good, yeah. Cool. Overall, that was a that was a very good clash. It was a lot of good contestants. Yeah. Um, I laughed a lot nine times. Uh, Corey Marshall hosted it. He did an excellent job as yeah, well. He did. did. Yeah. Did Roy, good. Ray Rogers did uh, guest black. Roy, and he was funny. And Nick Cantone was the that's right headliner, and he was really good. Nick Cantone, Mr. Mustache. Mm -hmm. That's right, the Mustache, mustache King, King himself. Tampa, Florida. I would go watch that entire show again. It was not a bad show. What about the heckler? The heckler. What heckler? And Corey. Oh, I think that's Corey and Deuce. Oh. oh, I thought you. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a different show. <laughs> Bobby Sabi on Friday. Yeah, Corey called out some guy for having new muscles, and that dude wanted nothing to do with that. <laughs> well, he fell asleep. He was asleep. That's why Corey called him out. Even so. Maybe he's more man. I mean, yeah, exactly. Never know. It's an awkward situation for everybody watching. And Could be on Black Tar here. I didn't see the guy. That is hard to find. East Coast. <laughs> Tennessee, no. Much easier on the West Coast. But the Hank Lord question was Jason's show, while we saw him the Friday night before, which technically is not this week in comedy. It was a leap year. It was a great movie. show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very well, very awesome show. Yeah, it's good times. And she got dealt with. That happened. She yeah, she thought she was helping. She yeah, helped a little bit, but it happened. overall, I was kind of wanted to smack her. They always do. I can't go back to jail. I refuse. <laughs> it was a fun show. Speak up. <laughs> what? So what happened on Thursday? Chris, tell us the news. Uh, we didn't talk about Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. We should get Wednesday. What happened on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday happened on Friday. What happened last night? I have no idea. What's what happening right now? Wednesday is the new Friday. <laughs> what did happen on Wednesday? As as tech. I was uh, I wasn't I was on the It was good. I I did a spot. Chris did a spot. It's John D. Miller, right? John D. Miller, Glenn Ferguson. Glenn Robertson. Glenn Robertson. Glenn Robertson. Glenn Robertson. Wow. And Jared Calm did a little spot, and uh, Odyssey, of course, hosted it. And it's an awesome room. It's just, just got to get the word out, man. I like the aesthetics. That's the biggest word I'm going to use today. The aesthetics. I like that balcony. <laughs> yeah. We can get people out there. I'm yeah, sure <laughs> there. I wouldn't set up there. That would be but great. Yeah, that's a great place for the, the comics. Well. If you think about it, that's yeah. great. So you get people if you know for more rooms. It's like DM how DM the comics sit in the back. They should do that for Aztec. Have the comics right. sit up top. Yeah. I also um, and they come down the spiral staircase. Yeah. You're about to go on. You know, <laughs> walk really slow. Swing from a rope. I have a fan blowing on you. I also filmed one and Jared yeah. from up there, and that works really well with like the line of sight and the light. Uh, it was actually perfect. And if you do a really bad set, you can always throw yourself from the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wednesday was also Andrew Polly's first guest spot right. at the Funny Bone. That That's right. Yeah. 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 You guys weren't there, don't fly. It was, it was a little rough. I was there. But it was fun. Oh, yeah, you were there. You were there. Yeah. No, it was, it was great to be up there, but... Uh, not my, not my finest moment, but I hope to redeem myself soon. He did a fantastic job. It was yeah. good. It was, it was a lot of fun. What do you think is your finest moment today? 
probably one of these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, last one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yourself from a balcony. Yeah. <laughs> when you suggested that we jump off the uh, balcony at Aztec, that was like the light bulb went off. Uh, no, I, I don't know, but that that was that was a lot of fun. I just uh, need to kind of. Uh, it it was a fun show. It was a lot of fun. I'm having a ball with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Thomas went up Wednesday. Oh, no. Sometimes it's more important to, to yeah, power yeah. through that stuff than to. Yeah, Nick wow. Cantone. Yeah, luckily Jesse and the, Nick were on that show. Those fuckers were not having anything that night. That wasn't just you. Yeah. Well, they were dicks. It was fun. It was fun. And Bodacious headline? Bodacious did headline. And he, he was fucking ripped it. He did a great job. Yeah. That was nice. Hate night radio. So how was Eddie Griffith on Friday? Um, I hear that he did well all week. I heard that he was a funny show all week. Um, very good. You went to Tracy Morgan instead? Went to Tracy Morgan instead, yeah, down for Virginia Beach. Would you like to talk about Tracy Morgan? Oh, um... I... Mm, Anytime a show starts out with, uh, this is so exciting, like the first time a girl licks your booty hole, uh, you're in for a treat. <laughs> and for 60 of 70 minutes, he talked about booty hole licking. And the 10 minutes that wasn't booty hole was about licking pussy. That dude loves <laughs> licking things. He's a licker. <laughs> That's just, He's a giver. There was licker. an overall <laughs> theme. <laughs> Like, at first, when he first said it, we were like, oh, is he joking? Is he trying to be funny? After, like, minute six, you're like, no, that dude just really likes Booty Hole. I'll bet dollars to donuts he liked Booty Hole that night. Oh, I would guarantee it. Probably more than one. I would guarantee it. Who was, uh, who, who opened for him? Uh, Bodacious MC'd, and I cannot for the life of me remember the guy who, uh, featured his name. Um... But those two were definitely the highlight of the show. Mostly Bo. The other guy was still a little hacky for my taste. But Bo did a very good job. So, overall, if I had, if I had actually paid $35 a ticket to see that show, I would have been livid. So, um, were you there when Roy Rogers was attacked by cougars? I was not. The that was Thursday was. night. He was oh. attacked by cougars? I like Jack. It was Thursday night. We skipped Thursday night where Chris Martin uh, did his guest spot. There's a reason for that. Evil <laughs> 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 laugh. <laughs> Richmond crowds were not on point this week for I knew non Eddie Griffin shows. I knew when I was, I was in trouble when I, uh, I, I was talking to a woman after uh, the Aztec Grill. And, I, and she said, well, you know, you have a good memory. And I said, well, I forgot to do a joke about the Hessians. And she said, who are the Hessians? So I said, okay. I blame American public education. <laughs> so no more jokes about Hessians, people. The Hessians you guys that work at the gas stations. Yeah. Right? Oh, man. But uh, Jeff Curran did well. Jeff Curran did very well. He did very well. That was a, an interesting night of comedy. Though I understand, if you believe him, he ate it uh, shortly thereafter at Apollo night. And that's, I would not that's be his surprised. That's his, uh, that's his report. I didn't see it. Yeah, I did not see it, but it would not shock me. Yeah. Apollo night does not like to give it up for just anything. They are, they are a tough, tough crowd. Yeah, I think I'm doing that in two weeks, so that's, uh, that should be fun. Well, Buzz says you shouldn't cater to the urban audience. You should just do your normal stuff. That's Buzz true. Is, I'm not catering. Buzz, uh, More Buzz can have some good advice, but Buzz can also have some awful advice. Buzz will probably never listen to this podcast. I so. don't know that Buzz can work a computer. So. <laughs> if he is and, listening by any chance, Buzz, and, and we're, we're talking about Buzz Lightyear anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Buzz Lightyear with one this is, He is a short bastard. This, is, <laughs> this has gone off into the... The other karaoke. Yeah, he happens to do karaoke. We were talking about Toy Story 3, but uh, somehow I got lost. The toys are back in town. Uh, so it, it was Aaron. Aaron was the Aaron Jackson. Aaron Jackson. Jackson. Aaron Jackson. Aaron Jackson. Very funny comic out of the D.C. area. Um, Nick Cantone. Uh, Nick Cantone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, geez, what? I think we only got him around for a couple more days. Are the Mustache Kings actually a band mm -hmm. or a comedy band? Yep. Or uh, he's, he's the they are. Band. They are a comedy band, and they uh, they have. Their one CD, it's really very good. Uh, when he went down there and told us all he was forming a comedy band, we thought he'd lost his damn mind. <laughs> and uh, then we heard the product and we're like, oh, that's actually a worthwhile use of your time. Good on you, bud. How long was he in Richmond? Ooh, four or five years. Um, he started out in Tampa. Got the gig as the house MC in Richmond when it was first opened, and then left uh, somewhere in the realm of two years ago to go back down to Tampa, something like that. And why did he move back to Tampa? Uh, just because he could. There were places down there, more places down there for him to get up, and uh, a whole different scene to be involved with. Tampa oh, Thriving comedy scene in Tampa. From what I understand, Florida is very good for it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Florida supposedly is very good. Tampa's got um, an improv of their own. They got Orlando that's just opening up. Um, What's that? Like two hours away, something like that. An hour and a half away. Um, a yeah. bunch of B rooms that are within two hour drive of the place. So yeah, it's actually a very good city for it. Explain for the ignorant people in our audience, what is a B room? Oh, um, a B room is a place that doesn't get people that you, that, that on a weekly basis doesn't have people that you would see on TV necessarily. Um, I think that pretty much the extent, I mean they're fairly small places, they tend to not have comedy, you know, more than two or three nights a week. Um, but, yeah. Kazi's for example. Kazi's would be a B room. Um, but Kazi's had Gallagher. Kazi's did have Gallagher, and they had Michael Winslow. Is Gallagher well. still doing comedy? Gallagher yeah. is still alive. Is he really? Yeah. Is he still touring? Mm -hmm. wow. so there was a there was an article about him. An article was sad. Yeah. Wow. Or rather, Gallagher was sad in the article. Yeah. It's accurate. I don't think they wanted to like him, but is he still smashing the watermelon. Yeah. So he <laughs> he uh. He played Cosby's in June, I think, and we went back the next night for an open mic. And we're sitting at the back booth, and we're like, wait a minute, picking stuff off. We're like, oh, there's crap everywhere. And it was like, oh yeah, Gallagher was here the night before. That's how you know. It was, it was really funny. You find crusted fruit. It was, you know, stuff like everywhere. I'm curious about the mechanics of that. Does he, like, go out and get his own fruit, or does he have... No, the club... Gets oh, fruit for him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he has Does he have like a con Does like, you know, the red, white, and he he Does he have like a contract yeah. that specifies what c only firm, ripe watermelons can be? Oh, right. I, uh, <laughs> I am not sure on that one. Uh, <laughs> He's a man who cares about the size of the melons. Yeah. Yeah. The firmness. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what, does he bring his own, like, gold plated. Uh, Sledgehammer. If I recall correctly, or does he just go down to Lowe's and like here, <laughs> autograph it afterwards and throw it out in the crowd? I believe, if I recall correctly, he uh, essentially sends uh, instructions and material to the club via FedEx, oh, okay. and then they have to put everything together for him, and then he just flies in. They may not. He like may Chuck not, Berry, huh? Yeah, he may not even send material. It may just be instructions, and they have to go out and build everything. That's interesting. I'll have to ask. That's a brandy glass full of brown M&Ms. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Now you have to listen to keep listening to this podcast because someday, some way in the future, we will know the answer to all these questions. That's right. Uh, but, uh, yeah. In fact, email us at whogivesaratsass at hotmail.com if you know. <laughs> Actually, comes from a pretty uh, 
don't know what the word is, but it's pretty uh, tedious story. No, I mean the reason they had that in there. The story is tedious, but the reasoning behind it was not so uh, asinine. Yeah. Because yeah. apparently they had. Brown much taste better. Well, Van Halen had you know booty hole uh, steak. Yeah, that was what it was. Booty hole I'm nice. <laughs> Ingleberries. Oh my God, that dude Clean loves one. booty hole. Yeah, there you go. I like to call like a butthole a, a balloon knot. It is kind of a balloon knot. Speaking of butthole. <laughs> <laughs>